Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. A little bit different today. It's what story is today? time. What is today? The Why? beginning of dry week. Okay. Started yesterday so at lunch. That's what it is. It's it is a week. dry week. And this is uh, a part of the quarterly challenge we have mm -hmm. in the community. And the quarterly challenge, for those that are unfamiliar, it's basically we take a uh, week break uh, from drinking. Can you imagine trying to sell this idea if you were on a like an actual right. TV channel? Right. You're like, hey, producers. Right. We understand why people are here. Why don't we spend a whole week not doing that thing? Four times a year, let's do the total opposite <laughs> of what people want. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, we decided it was more important not to let uh, alcohol become an automatic... Uh, routine that just gains momentum over time because we can't partake in whiskey and we're sadists these are cringy whiskey stories and uh, afterwards <clears throat> we're gonna do a distillery update read fast Daniel I'll read fast okay you wanna go first I'll go first okay we got Ben Clark's and I inherited my great uncle's whiskey collection he mm. had received most as gifts from his traveling friends we opened and sampled them all in ignorance our favorite was something from 1960 <laughs> We didn't do any research on it until it was about seven eighths empty. Oh God! And it was selling at auction for two thousand pounds. Uh, it was still the best use, though, as many of us bonded over those whiskeys, and it set me off on this path. See, oh, I don't find that cringe. No, well, you, you get halfway through, then you hit like the ah, oh, and then and then it ends on a little upbeat there, okay. on an upswing. I'm good with that. Debbie Eldred's Day Martini. As a teen, my friends and I snuck some rot gut whiskey out of my parents' liquor cabinet. Oh no. We cut class and drank a lot of it. I tried sneaking into my house without letting on that I was drunk. I had to vomit, but couldn't make it to the bathroom. <laughs> or my scheme would be foiled. So, I barfed into my window screen. It did not go well. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's living up to the name De Martini. <laughs> Draco Rogue. I got in a new charred barrel to experiment with aging Buffalo Trace White Dog. Mm -hmm. I bought two bottles, calculated the amount of water to make it 46 in four weeks when it would be ready four weeks later. Right. So he's waiting for a month. Yeah. Spirit was a little bit woody, had a raw mustiness, had some heat, plus the smell was a little bit funky. I couldn't figure out why. All right. Turns out my uncle had polished off the White Dog out of the barrel in a span of three hours. Son of a bitch. Two bottles. Yeah. And to hide it, filled it with silver tequila. Ah, <laughs> oh, shady uncles. My plans were ruined. He royally mooched. The barrel is now tainted with tequila. No, he just straight up stole that. And dude. he drank the tequila after the fact. <laughs> Not only did he fill it with tequila, yeah. he drank all the tequila after he did that. <laughs> he drank all of it. Right. Grant LaCroix. I was at a dive bar in Baton Rouge. The name starts with Port, but I won't say the full name. I'm sitting at the bar looking at the selection, and there is a fairly inebriated man two seats over eyeballing a single, dusty, single malt bottle on a shelf all by itself. He calls the bartender over and asks with a slurring voice, how much does it cost per glass? She has no idea what she's selling. She pulls uh -oh. it down, and she can't seem to find it in the system. She oh, says, no. I don't know, $10 a glass. Oh, no. He perks up and agrees. She pours a full... Eight ounce. Oh God! In a pint glass. Oh God! And hands it to him. The owner sees it happening and runs out and screams. That was a forty-year-old scotch. Oh! My God. It was supposed to be opened on the fortieth anniversary of the bar. Oh no! <laughs> she was fired immediately. Chairs were thrown. Needle oh. Needless to say, the meltdown was legendary. Oh. And the story is known in surrounding cities. Raymond Ramos. Oh, the whiskey mariachi. <laughs> a long time ago, I drank too much whiskey, and then I woke up naked in a baseball field. Yes, the sprinklers were on. I had to find very creative ways to walk the three blocks back to my home. <laughs> Needless to say, all the senior citizens out for their morning walk, well, they had quite a lively morning. <laughs> that is why I premeditate my drunkenness to this day. <laughs> and take breaks like the quarterly challenge. So that does not happen again, Raymond. <laughs> premeditated drunkenness. Uh, I've met Raymond. He's a good guy. I do not want to meet him naked in a baseball field. No, no. Uh, I, I'll put these back to back. So Casey Ayers, I dropped a customer's bottle of Blanton's. Uh, it was the last one. Oh, it sucks. Such a Casey move. So Casey. Such a Casey move. Uh... Jay Crew said, I ordered a Pappy 15 at a bar in Canada. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to finally get a Pappy 15. Yeah. When the glass came, the pour was so small, it was barely visible 
in the glass. Right. And I was devastated. Right. I sulked over the poor service. Yeah. And when I wasn't looking, the waiter came by and took my glass thinking I was done. <laughs> I hadn't even touched it yet. <laughs> it's like, oh, you must be finished, sir. Thank the just poor. <laughs> Oh. Uh, Brad Declare. Once I got so drunk, I agreed to help wax a dude on YouTube. Still have flashbacks. <laughs> you mean flashbacks like <laughs> this, Brad? My body's prepared. You need to tell My me. mind isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Uh, Drake Mason, I once went to a bar to watch some friends of mine play a little gig in a college town, local music. I asked a bartender who was wearing a fake snakeskin cowboy hat and a t-shirt saying, kiss the bartender. Yeah. <laughs> I, already, I already love hate this guy. I for, no, you're going to love him so much. <laughs> this is such a great story. For a double whiskey. Yeah. So give me a double whiskey neat. Yeah. So the guy pours three shot glasses. Mm-hmm. Downs to himself, <laughs> hands me the last one. He says, party on, man. <laughs> That's 15 bucks. Do you want to start a tab? Wait, how is this the thing where the bartender is this? Poor, poor, poor. Huh, huh. Party on, man. No, is there an environment? Where you were giving shots to your bartender? Yeah, that's a thing in some party bars. Really? Bartenders will be like, "Yeah, I'm in with you. One for the bar, one for me." That's right. pretty good. Party on, man! You know the fact that he had me a fake snakeskin hat. I bet he, his abs were dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I was out on a Friday with a partner and a friends. I got to meet one of their partners for the first time while chatting. Discovered he was a whiskey guy. Yeah. So we started talking. He started going on about how people don't know what they're talking about with whiskey and people just order it to look sophisticated and even continue with all these snobbish tropes about single malt is the only real whiskey. Right. He just, the epitome of snob. Right. He asked me if I've ever tried Laphroaig 10, to which I responded, no, I haven't. He walks to the bar and orders us both a double, yeah. which is expensive in Australia. Sure. So I start to have a better opinion of him, naturally. Sure. Like, yeah, hey, you're, you're my snob. Everyone has a pet snob. Yeah. We toast our glasses, and my jaw unhinges in dismay as he kicks back his double in one single gulp. He's shooting Lefroig? He's shooting a double of Lefroig. Hold after, on. After trying to be the epitome of right. a whiskey snob. Yeah, the, the, I'm, the, I'm the fancy lad when it comes to whiskey stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> putting, on, putting on a trucker hat with a pinky in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Grip. Bachelor party, let me explain. I have a pretty bad story that was somewhat self-inflicted that involves a call to poison control. My brother brought me camping on the shores of Lake Superior to go fishing. In celebration, I nerded out and started a whiskey tasting with my cousins who were also there, since there was a cast-strength bourbon thrown into the mix. Ooh. I added some water, and my cousins thought it was very cool seeing how it swirled and shimmered. I explained to my cousins that the swirling was caused by the very oil-heavy whiskey meeting the water, and I thought nothing of it and took a pretty big drink from the glass, after which I needed a drink of water. I took a swig from the water bottle we had just used a moment ago to water down the cast strength. I immediately knew something had gone horribly wrong. <laughs> oh no. Turns out, my brother had taken an average clear water bottle and filled it with lighter fluid for the campfire. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. So he could leave the approved container at home. Oh. That shimmer and swirl wasn't oils. It was lighter, it was lighter fluid. fluid. Oh god. We spent the next half hour on the phone with Poison Control, and the next hour after that, me drinking water, running to the bathroom to pee. The moral of the story. Yeah. Don't water down your whiskey, as it could kill you. Fair enough. That's science. <laughs> <laughs> Out for New Year's with my sister and her partner, we hit Danny Doolin's Irish Bar in Auckland. Right. There's a great band playing, everyone's having a good time. Suddenly, brother-in-law starts going berserk on the buzz boy. Okay. Or she calls him oh, Burko. The buzz boy. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my drink, man? The busboy says the glass was empty. No, it bloody wasn't. I had at least half a glass left, and you're clearing full glasses. Right. Busboy says, no, it was empty. Volume escalates. You're lying, you cheating, good cash-paying patrons. He's freaking out. Right. Kicks them all out of the bar. At this point, my sister, her face a bright shade of red, is caused by the chaos, and also from the glass of booze she stole from... Her partner, <laughs> when his back was turned, she admits she drank it all when he wasn't looking. That's a rookie maneuver. Uh, you just let him have the story of the bus boy. Right. Freaking Done. bus boy. Just walk away from that one. Bus boy's the worst. <laughs> it's like, if, if there ever is a time to admit it, it's in the restaurant. It's like, no, no, I drank it. It's fine. But you're already kicked out. You have nothing to gain. 
Other than feeling guilty for throwing the bus boy under the bus. Yeah. That's why they call him the bus boy. <laughs> yeah, just throw him under the bus. <laughs> I was out shopping with my wife and toddler on our day off work. Our toddler works so hard, so God bless him. Whiskey doesn't pay for itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Probably about 5 p.m. or so, just before we went to the supermarket to buy groceries. Thought to myself, it's my day off. I'm having a whiskey with my sushi. So I ordered a Centauri, Kakubin, Kakubin, Concubine. <laughs> yes, Concubine. Sure. Which Why is not? one of my favorite affordable whiskeys. I didn't specify how I wanted it. The waiter came back to with a very large beer type glass full of ice. And whiskey and lime and cherries and fruit and God Holy knows, crap! And God knows what else. <laughs> In hindsight, I should have rolled with it because he has obviously went to a lot of effort. But being the dick that I am, I burst out laughing. Then when I realized I was being a dick, I politely explained to him in Chinese that I only wanted a straight whiskey with no ice to enjoy my meal. He returned with the exact same large beer glass full to the brim oh. with straight whiskey. Holy crap! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Had to politely explain to him that I didn't want so much whiskey. Felt my semi alcoholic, long dead Irish traveler grandfather judge me negatively yeah. from the heavens <laughs> for complaining about too much whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julius Vasquez, look at this beautiful picture of a magnificent whiskey. And a piece of tri-tip. Mm. Now visualize the silence of the lambs, Clarice. <laughs> Just questions and then we'll get into some updates. Are you ready? Sure. Ever think you will be able to ship Eleanor or future bottlings out into the world? Or is there any push by Texas distillers to make that happen? Yes, there is. And it's going to be a long time. Uh, so because, shipping directly is the Yeah, issue. We're, we are trying to do it. Kentucky just got a law passed that allows the distilleries to ship direct to consumer. Is that only in Kentucky, though? Yep. So, can they ship outside of Kentucky? Uh, I think they can ship... Two states that allow alcohol so shipping. So that's like six or seven Just states. like California. It's like six or seven yeah, states. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Texas, the distillers hope to do it, yes, but they are going up against everyone else. The big box retailers, the distributors. Right. The, everybody is trying to keep that from happening. So, so it's going to be a battle. Now, what we're hoping to do is is a healthy middle ground. Right. For our, in our opinion. Right. Which is, look, we're not just saying we'll ship to everybody. Right. But if we started a whiskey club, like wineries have wine clubs, uh, and we would be allowed to ship to people in the whiskey club, sure. that should be cool. Sure. A parallel to that question is, is it likely that we're going to be able to have some products that scale up and get distribution? We're working on that yes. idea. The Patreon uh, crew has been so awesome and grown so fast. Yeah, we're going to try and lift the caps on that as soon as we can. Yeah. We are delivering things and there's a limited supply and we want to make sure we always have a conservative amount to make sure we can fulfill what we're promising. And because we promised everybody in the Patreon a shot at bottles, yeah. we recently had to make the call to stop selling bottles of whiskey to anybody who's not on the Patreon. Right. And that's only because right now our scaling is so small. Right. So if you want to try the whiskey and you're not on the Patreon, come to the bar, we'll pull you a glass all day long, make right. you drink all but day just long. Selling bottles. But just selling a bottle, we can only do that to Patreon members. Now we hope to right. scale up a few things to get enough bottle count that everybody can get a shot at it, but we're working on that. Yeah, so thank you for giving us this huge but great problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good problem to have. We finally released Wyoming, and this this is a big deal, right. and I wanna kinda make a big deal out of it. Yeah, you sit in the big boy chair? Yeah. I'll give you a sippy cup? Yeah. This bottle makes us officially the first US company in history to release a signatory or Duncan Taylor style independent bottling. Which means a bottle from another distillery that instead of rebranding it, we release with their brand as the primary brand on the bottle mm -hmm. and our alliance as the partner brand. And we've sourced a single barrel and then released it at cask strength as a barrel. There are a lot of other people sourcing whiskey and doing interesting things with it, but no one so far has started sourcing and highlighting individual distilleries. Mm -hmm. Which I'm cool with, because there's like totally 
amazing, glorious whiskeys that deserve a lot more attention. And it means people get to come to our tasting room and try a whole bunch of different interesting whiskey from other places. Another thing, this is ancient. Like people, this is so ancient. people stopped asking about this because it's been so long they forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, it's almost like that weird family secret no one talks about anymore. Right. Okay, where so, the hell is this scotch, Daniel? So been waiting on scotch. So here's what happened: the scotch went into like this weird diplomatic red tape fiasco until finally we said, "Do you know who the magnificent bastards are?" And they go, <laughs> the "Oh shit, you're that whiskey tribe." I was like, "Damn right, we're that whiskey tribe." <laughs> oh man, here's your scotch. Let me dump the barrels really quick. Yeah, oh, the two barrels are really like a barrel and almost a half, so what are we gonna do about it? It's like, I don't know, you got a lot of MBs to make this shit up to. I say, cool, here's what we're gonna do. You fill up one <laughs> of these, made up everything. you <laughs> fill up one of these completely with what? With Aaron Newmake. Okay, so we're gonna have five barrels worth, roughly. Now, we we probably won't be able to tell everybody it's Aaron, but you'll know. <laughs> so on the label, it's not gonna say Aaron. No. Because laws. That's gonna be a lot of experimentation and stuff we can be doing with Aaron Newmake Scotch. But we're also getting a reasonable amount of that 13 year old Royal Brockla. Mm -hmm. On the way, it's imminent. Is you gonna give a little update on our trip to Ireland? Yeah, I ordered in some Irish weather for you. So, what are we doing in Ireland? How long are we in Ireland? We are gonna be in Ireland? Ireland for about eight days. We're gonna start in South uh, East Ireland at Waterford. Waterford. Head over to Middleton. Yeah. Head north, hang out with uh, Powers, hang yeah. out with Teeling. Right. And we're gonna spend one of those nights on Thursday the 13th right. at a gathering that anybody in Ireland who wants to hang out with us can come hang out at oh. with people pouring whiskey. Okay. Details to follow, but, it's, but it is a thing. This yeah, yeah. is the Texas Whiskey Blend. Okay, so quickly. It's time to talk about it for real. So about six months ago, uh, Jake Clements, founder of the Texas Whiskey Festival, approached us and said, hey, I would love to do a blend of whiskey from different Texas distilleries. I reached out to three that I had on mine. They all said, yeah, that sounds great. And they were Balconis, Andalusia, and Iron Root. Those guys came to the back room at Crowded Barrel, brought their best juice. Oh, that's right. They brought their best stuff, and then together they figured out. We built it on the uh, the basis of how you blend in Scotland by starting with a grain whiskey and then adding some malt for flavoring. Yeah. So we started with iron root. We ended up with fi roughly 58% iron root. Then we added roughly 24% Balconis Mirador. Yeah. And then we added roughly 11, 12% of Andalusia Striker, their mesquite smoked malt. Yeah. So it's this nice corn, and actually the classification is blended bourbon, <laughs> but it's actually this nice corn-based spirit with a rounded malt finish and a little bit of smoked spice. We're all gonna decide what we're gonna proof it to, and then it's gonna be available, released first to you guys. So I was thinking, now, this is a world first. Was this, a, I thought this is a Texas is. festival thing and then anything left over, hopefully we're no. gonna grab some. No, the agreement was we get one month yeah. to sell it to our people and whoever they send to our website. So all the brands right. can send people to our website, Patreon first, right. and then everybody in the tribe gets a shot at it. Yeah, yeah. We figure we'll end up with around a thousand bottles, half size bottles. Yeah, right on. And then after a month, Whatever's left, we're gonna send to retail where it will probably be double what you pay for it at our distillery. Oh, dude. Just just quick question. The camera's, yeah. the camera's off. Yeah. There's no recorded evidence of this. Okay. How did we scam those distilleries into letting us do <laughs> They don't know anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.